Hold up. What's going on? We live tonight. Just gonna go live for a little bit. Do a chat. Chat with you guys, man. Let me pull this up real quick so I can see. Do a chat. Chat with you guys. Good evening, Central Valley. My brother's in the house. What's going on, man? We got uh, Matt Catter in the house. Michael Marilla was here. Eric Burnside. 351 Cleveland. Yeah, the new rides. I just got them right here. I came and picked them up uh, so I can open these up. Good morning, Pete's. Pete's Whiskers. Good night for me. It's 1116 right now. Go to bed. I know, man. It's been a long day. It's been a long day. But rods came in today. Um, I went to go pick them up from the house. So I didn't open them yet. The only thing I did was just get the top off of this thing. But yeah, man, those who who packages these, man? It's so hard to get into them. <laughs> it is very hard to get into them. But yeah, we're at the house. Uh just wanted to go live and uh Share the first day uh, experience out there on the boat. Um, it was great. We had a great time out there. We had a blast. Well, by we, I say me, I. Um, I took the boat out up about 15, uh, 15 miles up in the D.C. What's going on, Brian B. Catfishing in the house. Duckwork shears to get mine over. I know, man. I don't know who makes those things, man. I don't know. Oh, man. But. Yeah, we had a great day out of the water. I, I put in that Marshall Hall, which is south of D.C., not too familiar with fishing that part of the Potomac River. Um, I was just messing around and in the water, um, locating some spots, playing around with the fish finder, side scan, down scan, all that good stuff. And then I was like, man, let's just go ahead and shoot up to D.C. It was, I knew it was about another 13 miles north of where I was at, so. I made that ride up there. It was a nice, smooth ride. I got the boat up to top speed at 26 miles per hour. First day is always nerve-wracking, wracking, but you who are safe, that's important. Yeah, BP fishing, we made it safely. We made it safely, man. The, the getting back to We made it back to the boat ramp safely, um, but once I backed that boat ramp up into the, tra uh, the trailer down, man, it was... Pfft, it was uh it was some problems. <laughs> it was some problems, man. We ran into some problems. The uh I went to go start the uh I went to go start the engine. And uh when when I start the engine, you know, normally it goes ee, 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 like in, in there, there's like a beep noise that, that does it as you know, it's the engine turnover. That's not the sound in the engine, but that's just sounded like the beep noise. But when I went to go start up this time, it was like ew. Ew. It just sounded like a bit a dead battery. It was sound like it was died. I was like, oh man, don't tell me that the battery died before I got the boat on the on the trailer. Luckily, I had already had everything tied up at this point, man. And I was like, man, how am I gonna get this thing? Um, but I this is when I got back into the boat after I backed the I backed the truck up, put the trailer in the water, and I untied the the uh, the stern, but I didn't untie the bow because the bow one is a lot longer, and I knew I had enough length of the rope to be able to put the boat on the trailer and and be good. So I didn't untie the stern. Thank thank God I did not untie that stern. When you dock in Marshall Hall, if you want, let me know. Me and my homie can show you some spots that will hit up. No doubt, Brian B. Man, I appreciate that. Um, some old heads they they showed me uh some spots when I when I got up there on the dock. Um, at the end of the night, man, but I tried to start it. I tried to start it. It wasn't starting. The battery had died on me and there's two batteries in there. Um, brand new batteries just put in there in November. Um, man, I was like, man, what am I going to do? I had a third battery that was just powering my electronics. So I was like, man, I might have to, uh, unhook that. But what I ended up doing was I just backed the trailer up far enough and, uh, jumped out 
I had to jump out and got in up to my like knees in the water as I jump in and I grabbed the rope and I just pulled the boat onto the trailer <laughs> and then I hook it up and then I, I crank it the rest of the way up, man. That was the first day experience of trailer in the boat and it was not a good one. So made it home about an hour and a half ago. And so then I just went to Walmart to get another charger so I can charge up both the batteries at the same time. Vito Fish, what's going on, man? That was one thing I didn't know. I was like, I don't think these batteries charge themselves. I don't know. I'm not sure. You know, I wasn't sure if they if there is a, you know, I know in a car you have an alternator charges it. I don't know how it works on a boat. You know, it's my first time on the boat. But needless to say, I took those batteries off and they're charging now. So we're going to put them out there tomorrow and I'm going to put the boat in the water again tomorrow and going to test it out and see if see if we're good to go um but shout out to the guy that i bought the boat from too man he's a great awesome guy man um i hit him up as soon as i got the boat in the water just to get tips on how to start it you know how to get it going um he walked me through that over the phone and then he checked in with me at the end of the night when i was on my way home um the, yeah, that's what I would think too. Uh, fishing with Mid South, but my motor is also a 1987. When I was looking it up, it was like motors that are in the last 20 years. So I don't know if my motor has uh, has uh, something to be able to charge the battery. Um, but I'm gonna have to figure this out. Hope you had a good day on the water today. Missed the show, but I'll catch you next time. No doubt, vibes, man. Appreciate that. It's all good if you missed out. But yeah, the batteries died on me when I got back to the boat ramp, man. Those of you that are just coming in, that's what I was just telling the story about. Of uh, it just when it was cranking, it was making the noise. I was like, yeah, like it was just going down. I was like, dang, man, not the batteries, not the. But luckily, it happened when I got back to the ramp. Once I got back to the spot, and I tried to start it back up again. So I got the batteries off. They're charging up right now. And so we'll get back out there tomorrow um, with the wife. The wife will be coming with me tomorrow as long as we can get the boat, uh, you know, started and everything. But, yeah, I put the, I'm going to put the boat on the water. Before I pull it off the trailer, I'm going to make sure I can get started up, put the batteries in, get them all hooked up. I do have a third battery, a bigger battery. Um, the two batteries that I have, uh, they are... I don't know the exact size, but I bought a big battery, like Mondo. I might just switch, put one of those batteries um, and replace that and use the other one to to run my electronics, a smaller one. I'm coming out tomorrow. I'll hit you on the phone when I'm headed to the dock. Bellhaven is where we docking out, so we ain't got to go far. Okay, no doubt, Bellhaven. Tomorrow, I think I'm going to head over to um, Gravelly Point and uh, dock out of there. Um, so I'm not sure. I think that's where I'm gonna go, or I may go up to the Anacostia dock, the dock on the Anacostia Riverside. I might put in from there. Make sure you have tools. Oh, yeah, yeah. I got uh what's going on, Kevin? Appreciate you coming in, brother. Yeah, I got tools. I put tools on the boat, I got tools in the truck. Man, I got tools for everything. I got uh vote um uh, multimeter. So I can read the voltage. When I put the when I pulled the battery off the boat, it was reading at 12.7 volts, which is that's good. That's where it's supposed to be at. I mean, a fully charged battery probably reads at like 13, 8, 13, 9. So I don't know. That may have been a wire come loose. So I'm gonna have to check on that too. He was also telling me, um, checking the back of the boat where where there's wires, um, check it out. Maybe something came loose. Headed to bed up at 4.30. No doubt, Kevin. Yeah, I'm about to head to bed soon, too. I wasn't staying live long. Just wanted to come in here and, you know, chat with you guys real quick. And I'm going to head to, um, head to bed very shortly myself and wanted to open up a package that came today. We got to get some new rods for the boat because I bought some pretty big rods, a uh, 9-foot-6, and uh, my brother got an 8-foot-6. But, you know, those are no good on the boat. They're way too long. So let's get into the unboxing. Oh, what do we have here? It's a purple real seat. Check out, yes, CatCon. Those of you guys that are in here, we do have CatCon uh, on Friday. Starts at 8 a.m. I shared the uh, message up on my YouTube. You Make sure you subscribe to Catfish Conference channel. Ooh, these things are nice. I like them. Let's get it. Oh, and it came with ride sleeves. That's what's up. That's what's up. 
I can get it out of here. Okay, the rod sleeve doesn't want to come out. So there we go. So here we go. I'm out catching tomorrow. No doubt, Vito. Ain't no one going to get my cornbread. <laughs> So here we go. They came with rod sleeves. I like that they came with rod sleeves. Um, here's the rod. Nope, not Big Cat Fever, Slime Cat. We got the Slime Cat. This is uh, the Joker edition, which is like the purple real seats and the purple accents on it, you know, like the Joker colors. I like it. I like it a lot. I like these Slime Cats. So I ordered two of them for the boat. And the the I ordered uh two more of the uh the chaos um PC funds. I like those reels, man. I like them. So I ordered two more of those. Those will be coming on here. I know they don't match the color, which is not uh it's not gonna have the uh, approval of Mexicat, but I'm not big on matching. I know, I know, Kevin. I had, I already talked about it. I had already ordered it like, you know, a couple, I ordered it like a week and a half ago. Took a while for them to come. I know, Kevin. I just needed them now. You know, when you need something, you just, you just got to get it. But hey, look, I'm going I'm to use some money this weekend too when the codes come out. I mean, they were on sale. They were like $15 off each already. So I don't know how much cheaper they're going to be. <laughs> Oh, I needed it though, Kevin. I needed it, man. I needed it on the boat. I needed it on the boat today. I needed it today out there. It's going to be out there. Well, it ain't going to be out there tomorrow because got to wait for the uh, for the reels to come in. Those should be coming in any day now too. Need, need. I know it wasn't a one. It was a need. I, I, well, it definitely was a one, but I did need more rides on the boat. Need it now. I got to have it now. Fishing is the drug. The the tug is the drug, y'all. <laughs> the tug is the drug. Oh, man. But, yeah. Man, it was terrible. I was up to my knees in the river. <laughs> like, had to pull the boat around because it had came on the other side of the trailer. So, I had to get out. I had to pull it back around. And then I had to pull it up onto the trailer. I was like, And it was dark at this point. Because when I pulled up to the boat ramp, there was a whole bunch of people there. They was having like some little party, soiree, whatever. They were drinking. I was chopping them up, talking to them. They was telling me about some spots um, that they caught some big catfish out of. So then we finally got it on. But, man, we got it on, though. We got it on. I just had to, I just had to use the muscles and just pull that boat up on there. <laughs> I had to pull the boat up on there. So we're gonna get out there tomorrow and we're gonna put the batteries back on, hook those up. Then we're gonna check the connectors in the back, make sure everything's all um, tight and connected. So I don't know, man, the batteries weren't fully drained cause you know, the lights were still working on the boat and the bilge pump was still working and everything. So yeah, we'll, we'll figure it out. Yeah, uh, Fishing Magician, he's gonna be out with me um, next week. He'll be, he'll, be, he'll be able to come out on the water. It'll be his first time Fishing the Potomac River from the boat. We weren't able to, uh, we weren't able to, um, I wasn't able to take him out tomorrow because wifey got to come tomorrow. Um, she was supposed to come today, but we, we couldn't get a babysitter, but we got a babysitter lined up for tomorrow. So she'll be out there with me and enjoying the water. Um, but we're going to put in and uh, right in D.C. and we're going to fish D.C. because that's where I'm more experienced at when it comes to fishing the Potomac River. I fished D.C. today for one hour and we caught two fish and we had a hit right in the beginning. So it could have been three, but the hook turned into itself and we missed it. Um, but I was fishing um, down um, Fort Washington area south of uh, south of D.C. Um, we were mar I was marking fish, just didn't get any bites. But once we got to D.C., by turn on i know i know i know and i knew i know cat cat con is right around the corner too there's going to be a whole lot of deals coming 
But hey, I needed it. They were already on sale. So that was my <laughs> that was my uh it was like ten dollars off each, both of them. So I was like, hey, we're just gonna get it. We're gonna make it happen. But yeah, that's all. Just wanted to come in, share the story with y'all. Anybody want to jump in the live? They welcome to. Let's put the link in here. And then if not, then we're just gonna wrap this thing up. We're gonna go ahead and wrap this thing up. Oh, coming smooth, super boat upgrades. You know, no doubt the boat definitely needs upgrades. The boat's going to need upgrades for a while because it's an old boat. And we're going to upgrade every part on it one at a time. One at a time. We're going to upgrade the boat. Um, next thing, I'm probably going to upgrade the uh, steering helm and hydraulics. That's probably going to be the first thing. Cause I noticed it was leaking around the helm, uh, the hydraulics. So I gotta check the gaskets. I gotta order some gaskets and replace those. So you don't want too much fluid leaking out. So I gotta figure out what what exactly what um what part exactly that I need that fits the the gaskets that I need. I was looking it up the other day. It's kind of hard to find parts on a boat that's thirty. 33 years old. That boat's older than me. <laughs> that boat is older than me. I got the, uh, I was going through the, the whole manual right here on the motor, reading all about this. It's a lot. This is just the motor, not even the boat. Get blue lights and light up. Oh, yeah, vibes. I, lights are already ordered. I'm just waiting for them to come in. I ordered them like two days ago. I was waiting to find the exact ones and um, Catfish and Dreams, he sent me some. What's going on, Mr. Doug? Appreciate you coming in. So I ordered lights, uh, strip lights. Uh, they are multicolored, so you can change the color on them. It comes with a remote, so I'll be able to set the mood, whatever whatever light that I want to be, uh, what I want to use, whatever I'm feeling that day. We'll put them on green majority of the time for the slime cats. For the slime cats. But yeah, we caught two today. We caught two today. Uh 20 pounder and a 10 pounder. They was both on both on the uh, on the um blue cat, muddy river blue cat. Shout out to Chris Flores. They were uh man, I swear my scale was off because they they looked bigger than that. <sighs> yeah, yeah, that Brian, that's how I be. Sometimes you're like, man, look. We're going to put work off so we can go have some fun. We'll figure that out later. <laughs> That's how I was. Uh, I had to um, get the um, fish finder and everything wired up over the weekend, this past weekend. So I was like, man, I didn't feel like doing it, but I was like, I got to get out there and do it so I can get this boat on the water. That was my motivation. Um, but, I, yeah, I wired it all up myself, wired a third battery up. That just powers the electronics. So... If that problem happened today where I was out on the water and the, my batteries died, I did have a, I had a third battery that I knew um, was full of power because I just charged it up. The only thing that's running on it is the fish finder. That's it. So that don't, that don't draw much power at all. Don't draw much power at all. But all right, guys. Oh, Eric, you, you didn't catch nothing, man. I know. Skunking has been uh, uh it's been going around lately. I saw that Mark finally got the skunk off. <laughs> yeah, Mark has been getting skunk for a while. No skunk on the maiden voyage. Not today, not today, Mr. Duggar. We got it out there. We got out there and found some fish. Um, the fish finder I got was a um Lawrence Elite 2 um nine inch. It's nice though. I don't like the navigation on it though. I don't know. I just have to get used to it because I got the navigation. I downloaded the navigation on my iPad, the Navi X, and I love that thing. I love the way it reads. I love how you can see the contours and all that stuff. So that's what I use for navigation. I don't even use the fish finder for the Navi. Heck, yeah, whenever you need some help, you know where I'm at. Back up, we can get it done. I, I, no doubt, man, no doubt. No doubt, Brian. 
yeah that's what I, that's what i'm pretty much trying to do is do all the work majority of the work myself like as far as you know wiring up stuff electronics anything new that i add to it um you know changing out spark plugs doing all that stuff but anything like crazy ridiculous rebuilding the motor type stuff man now nah, i'm gonna have to go ahead and take that to somebody else <laughs> um I've been looking at videos on how to uh, change the gaskets on the uh, steering wheel helms. And what I see is the hardest part is getting the steering wheel off. I know they make a tool for that. So I might have to order that tool just so I can get the steering wheel off of it. Because I saw a bunch of videos. One guy, man, he took a blowtorch to it. He was banging it with the hammer. He was doing it the hard way. <laughs> but then the other videos I watched, they have like this claw that goes onto the steering wheel. And then you just turn it and then like it just pops off um that's gonna be my next step is to do that and replace the gaskets inside of the uh steering wheel home because it's leaking a little bit of fluid and don't want don't want the hydride fluid leaking out of there we need all that those new joker rods look hella cool definitely like that like the look better yes man i love this look I love this look. And, you know, I had to get it. I didn't tell Jasmine I was getting them. But, you know, she loves purple. She loves purple. So I was like, yeah, let me get these. She'll love these on the boat. I love this color. And they, uh, I'm pretty sure they light up under black light. I don't have any black light um, in the house. But I'm. Um, 98% positive that these glow under black light. So I'm going to have to give me a black light on the boat for the nighttime fishing. The guides on it are good, too. They got these nice steel guides. Yeah, she's definitely going to like those. She went to sleep already, so she ain't even get to see them get open. But she will definitely see them tomorrow. She's going to love them. Yeah, okay, they, they glow in the dark. Ricky Creations, what's going on, brother? <laughs> the fish, we caught them already, and we threw them back. We caught the fish already, and we threw them back. But guess what? Uh, Jasmine's coming out with me on the boat tomorrow, Ricky, so you know what that means. We get to put the rod and the reel in the water for the first time. This thing right here, look, it's, it's green, and then it's purple. The way that you guys are looking at it is green, but the way that I'm looking at it is purple. I got to, like, kind of block some light. But, man, this color up, oh, there we go. Purple, green. Purple, green. Sick. These things are sick. Ricky, I may have to get you to paint me some uh, some um, bait casters. Yeah, I was out on the boat. Because I ordered two bait casters, but you know they're not the same color. Might need something to match this purple and green right here. I might have to send those to you. She wants a ride for a fraternity colors. Ricky's definitely the man to go to to take care of that. He can definitely customize and hook you up. You just got to send him an email and then he'll take care of you. Don't buy two if you're only going to use once. Maybe rent. Maybe able to rent it from Home Depot. Yeah, I know. I was checking out Fish and Chick. I just, this tool, I don't know where, you know. I don't know anybody that has this tool. <laughs> I would only use it just to replace the, the gaskets. So, you know, you don't have to do that often. That's something you do once every probably like 10 years, really. So, yeah. I'm going to see if I can find somebody that got one. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. There's a lot of colors. You got the sparkles, but these are just like the two main colors that you see is the green and the purple. And there's a lot, a lot, a lot. It's like turquoise, turquoise, green, purple. It's sick. The combinations. You, it, doesn't, the, it doesn't justify like seeing it on camera, but this thing is sick. He took it, sandblasted it down and repainted the whole thing. Super dope, man. Super dope.
Okay, Brian. I'll I'll send you a pick of the two. It's like this claw, like it's like this weird claw thing that like grips on the like um metal around the steering wheel, and then you just like crank it and then it just pops the steering wheel off once you take the center nut off. And I know I know you I'm gonna need it. I mean, I probably could get the hammer and try to bang it out, but it'd be a lot easier to have that too. Red, purple, gold, green, and silver. Ooh, that's what you put in here to get this effect. No doubt. This is super dope. Because you can see all the specs, too. That's probably that gold and silver specs underneath. To give it that shine, that glistening. Whew. Dang. All the bank spots. I was just got a text from Mark. He was saying all the bank spots were taken up, man. The homeless people invaded that spot even more. I hope I'll be able to record from there on uh on Thursday. Oh shoot, I'm gonna have to go by there on the boat tomorrow and check it out. Make sure I can get to that spot because that's where I plan on going live on, on my interview on Friday. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I got you, Brian. I'll send you the picture. I'll definitely send you the picture. Okay. Pulley, pulley, puller. You can rent one at the at the auto store. All right, no doubt, Mr. Duggar. And Brian, if you don't have one, then I'll just go go rent one. But if you got one, I'll definitely pull up and pick that up to get that, that steering wheel off. And I gotta figure out the uh, gaskets that go on there. The model number isn't on on the helm. That's what I was looking for. It's like rubbed off. So, gonna have a hard time trying to figure that out. <laughs> Called a gear puller. Yeah, it's it's something weird. I'm typing it in right now. See what pops up. So here one goes right here. Uh, let me copy that. That's what one of them looks like, Brian. Said pulley, pulley, pulley. <laughs> that's one of them. That's not the one that I saw on YouTube, but that's the same thing. This is the one that I saw on YouTube. Come on, highlight this thing. Oh man, what happened? Damn, that's some long links. That thing popped up in two. Oh man, that was way too much. <laughs> Golly, I don't even know if that link gonna work. Oh, you see multiple in the shed, man. I don't. It don't matter. It don't matter what color. <laughs> Just need one of them so I can get this steering wheel helm off. What are you doing up if you're going to be fishing in the morning? I know, Jeff. I'm gonna get. I I don't sleep much. All I need is like five hours. That's it. And I'm not going fishing until we're not gonna leave until like ten thirty. You got it though. All right, that's a bet, Brian. That's a bet. Yeah, so I'm gonna lay down here in like an hour and I'll get plenty of sleep. 
because we don't drop the, my son off to my mother until 10 o'clock, and then we'll head down to D.C. and put the boat ramp in. So I should be live around noon, maybe a little earlier than that. I'm going to be in D.C., so I don't have to have a, as far of a drive. That Marshall Hall is like an hour away from me, but the boat ramp in D.C. is only 30 minutes. I got to drive past that boat ramp just to go to Marshall Hall. All right, no doubt, Brian, man. I will find you in the boat. I like driving that thing around. <laughs> so I'll, I'll, and I'll pack it up and, and uh, go go find you, find you in the water. Use those when I was replacing my wheel hub on the Blazer. Although my dad has some, but that's like 55 minutes away. <laughs> yeah. If I could bump into Brian out there on the water, Ma, that'd be great. I know you'll be fishing in Fort Washington. I'll be up in D.C., but. We could still, I like to open her up, take her out on the water. She did good today, man. She handled that water real good. It was a little windy and the waves were pretty big, but it wasn't no problem. What bait are you playing? I'm using uh, the bait that I used today. I got a carp. I got a whole nother side of carp to use. So that's what I'm going to use tomorrow. Carp has been the, the, uh, the meal ticket for me. What's going on, Tiger? Appreciate you coming in, brother. We just out here. That just went live, you know, just chatting up from the house. <clears throat> As you need this. Oh, okay. The OEM's tool, her balance steering wheel puller. No doubt, Ricky. Find Chunky drive by and throw candy at him. <laughs> Y'all are crew. Now, I don't think Chunk is going to be uh, – Chunk. well, I don't know. He may be out tomorrow. I know he wasn't going to be out today and yesterday because of the wind. He'll probably be out there live tomorrow, though. I know. He hasn't been – he hasn't gone live yet this week. The $60 carp. Now, this carp only cost me $15 today. Only $15. <laughs> and I had carp, too, but I had to – that last carp that I bought, man, it was sitting outside for too long and – it thawed and froze and thawed and froze, thawed and froze too much. So I was like, man, I'm just going to go ahead and buy me some fresh carp. So I threw that carp away. I should have tried to use it, though. Use some old. That carp was like two weeks old, though. I don't know if it's going to work. But fish love some stinky bait. Oh, no, so no. oh, I didn't mean to show that. I was trying to click on it. Let me go on my YouTube. <laughs> Let's go here. Let I was trying. All right, here we go. Oh, okay. That one's different. Oh, no, you. Yes, I did, fishing chick. I spent $60 on two carp one day, man. It was. <laughs> I needed bait. We were going out in the boat, and uh, I didn't want to keep driving around looking. So I just like, ah, oh, man, these are it. They only had live carp. Live carp are way more expensive than dead carp. I paid like $3.99, $4.50 a pound. It was ridiculous. And I bought two of them. So, yeah, you do the math. It wasn't even that much carp in pounds wise They were probably like 15 pounds each. I mean, not each, but total 15 pounds of carp. I bought a 20-pound carp cheaper than that. But to the place I normally buy the carp, it's $1.99 a pound. So I only paid $15 for my carp today, which I use today. I'll be able to use tomorrow. I may even be able to use some on Friday, too, because I'll be out there on Friday um, fishing from the bank. So I got a, I'm on the Catfish Conference Um and I'd rather go live from the bank. Uh, what's the name of your boat? The name of the boat is Sweet Doggy. <laughs> That's the name of the boat. We named it Sweet Doggy. So we could put a whole lot of sweet doggies in the boat. Those of you that have been following me and watching my channel, you know what a sweet dog is. Sweet doggy is a big fish. We want to put big fish in the boat. That's why we're naming her Sweet Doggy. Sweet Doggy. We're going to have Sweet Doggy on the back and then, you know, put the Has Life on the side of it. 
put the has life and jazz life on the side of the boat. She can tell Jesus about her. <laughs> Look what Brian said. Had scroll up. Oh man, let me scroll up real quick. Got you. I might be in a spot. I can only <laughs> yo. <laughs> hey Brian, you's a fool, man. Yeah, you definitely. One thing about these fishing spots is, whoo, man. You tell some people. You tell one person, and then it's out there. Especially if it's on YouTube. Oh man, everybody knows. Everybody knows. But it's hard to hide spots on YouTube. I got my one spot. That nobody knows about where I go live at. Only person that knows about that is uh DMV Whisker King. He knows about it. And Fisher Magician, I told uh him and uh TBA about the spot, but nobody knows it's a secret. That's my secret bank spot. Always got it to myself, always super quiet. Don't gotta worry about the public coming up and messing with me. In DC, it's uh fishing the bank in DC, it's hard to find places like that. You see Chunky Cats, he's always getting pulled up on by somebody. Uh, Eugene, tomorrow I'll be live um, around noon, uh, maybe a little bit before, maybe a little bit after, but around noon I'll be live tomorrow until about 5 o'clock. And then tomorrow, um, then Friday I'll be uh, I'll be live after, my, after the Catfish Conference interview. I'm just going to go out there, get set up, um, get all my, you know, my gear set up. My merchandise came in. Um, my boy is dropping it off to me uh tomorrow morning. It got shipped to his house. Uh, the guys that um shout out to them, they definitely uh hooked me up. I'll definitely have the link and everything like that. Um, tomorrow, if you guys want to get your own merchandise or you guys want to get something done, you can definitely uh reach out to them, they'll take care of you. But he had it shipped to his house, so he's driving it down to me in the morning. Um, so can't wait for that. Then my website will be live. I have the the website's already done. The only thing I was waiting for was the merchandise to come in before I just you know tell you guys, hey, here here's the website. I don't want people going there and putting a bunch of orders in with merchandise that I didn't have in my possession yet because this stuff comes all the way from Pakistan, and I and you know has to go through a whole lot of shipping. There's been a whole lot of snow, all that stuff. I was just hoping that it showed up on time, and it showed up on time. How? DHL man, shout out to DHL. They package showed up on time and it came all the way from Pakistan to the United States and it and it came on time. The United States Postal Service, UPS, and FedEx can't ship nationally on time, but these guys can get some package from Pakistan to my house on time. Shout out to DHL. I'm about to start shipping everything through DHL. <laughs> They got it, and it was in, it was on hold in customs for two days, and it still came on time. Big shout out to them. It was in held. It was on hold in uh, D.C. for two days. Oh man, my contacts is drying out. It's about time to take these contacts out. It's messing with my eyes, man. It's messing with my eyes. But yeah, I can't wait to be out there tomorrow and get Jasmine on some fish. She definitely is going to get a new PB tomorrow. Her biggest catfish is like three pounds. Yeah, Mr. Gadget. Yeah, I went. This is my second time going live today. I was live earlier on the boat, and then now I'm live in the house. I was just, uh, those of you that are coming in, I got some new slime cat rods. These are the Joker series, the Joker edition. I love it, man. Purple. I love this, like, EVO foam. There was, like, two choices. I was like, yep, give me the foam. This stuff, um, these are very good. Um, the blue cat rods, uh, handles, those are very good grips. Those are, like, leather. Those are very good. Um, the whisker seeker rods, I don't like them because they're cork. And you guys know how cork tears up. So I will be wrapping. I've seen a lot of people wrapping um cork uh cork um rod uh what do you call these? Rod, I don't know, handles, grips, um with paracord. So I'm gonna be wrapping that with paracord. But I got two of them since we need more rods for the boat. Oh, you watched the between means? <laughs> no doubt. I, yeah, I gotta go after this. After I end this live stream, 
I'm going to go back in there and put in the uh, the times of the fish catcher so that people can pull it up and watch it. They don't have to don't have to watch the whole live stream. And I'm going to change the thumbnail too to the fish catch. Yes, these are. I like them. And they glow in the uh under black light, not glow in the dark, but they glow in the black light. I don't know, they may glow in the dark too. I'm going to check them out. I don't know. They may. But yeah, those are sweet. I like the color on those. Those are some nice rise. You know, Jasmine's favorite color is purple. So she'll she'll give the green light when she sees the color. Like, you bought some more rise. Oh, those are pretty. She's gonna forget all about that. I bought more rise and spent more money. Don't wrap it, you shrink wrap from the rod builders. It works great. Okay. I'm I will check the, the shrink wrap out. I've seen the shrink wrap uh works really great too. Um, but I like the look of the paracord. I would like to get some orange paracord, um, like the orange and black paracord. I saw somebody wrap it. It looked very, it looked very dope, wrapped in the um that paracord, that paracord design. But I also I'll look at some uh some shrink wrap. I figure I'll get a couple slime cat rides this weekend. Hopefully they give a discount code on. I, Mike, I'm pretty sure they're gonna give a discount code. Uh. That's what Kevin was in here talking about earlier. He was like, why? You know the Catfish conferences this weekend. I was like, I know, but I needed them. I just had to have them in my possession. <laughs> I didn't want to wait. <laughs> but, yes, you're right. But they were $10 off already. Both of them, they were $10 off each. So, hey, there was already a discount. $10 off my but Hey, that's a discount. But hopefully they have some, like, buy one. If these rock companies put out some buy one, get one free, whoo wee. I'm gonna give me a couple. I'm gonna give me a couple if they put some buy one, get one freeze out. They're making color patterns. The paracord holds a bunch. Oh, okay, okay. You're right about that. The paracord will hold a bunch of water and slime. You're right about that, Mr. Gadget. You're right about I didn't think about that. Because when it does get wet, the paracord just soaks up this rope. All the vendors probably going to sell out, bro. That's what happens at the at the actual conference. The vendors sell out. They sell out of like so much gear that they bring. Man, I'm so blown that they didn't have that you know it's virtual this year. But at the same time, because it's virtual, everybody gets to be a part of it. So even if you can't travel, everybody sitting at home just watching the live streams, you'll be able to participate and get the uh, promotional codes and. There's a there's a nice lineup. They they put some deep thought into this catfish conference and it's well planned out. They got people every uh 20 minutes they have a new person come on. So you have like a 20 minute segment. Some people may be a little over, some people have like a 30 minute window. I know mine is like 15 minutes. Uh, I know I go right on at 4 30 and chunky cats goes on right after me. And then Mark is at 1 30 that day. Mark, I believe, is at 1 30 p.m. that day. Um, but my house is like at 4.30, my house is off the chain at 4.30 on a Friday. My son is running around all crazy in the background and, and, uh, my kids, you know, they're, they're doing their thing. So I was like, man, I'm not doing this from the house. I'm going to go to the bank and set up shop and be comfortable in my zone and do my interview from there. Planning to watch all weekend. I hope they do, but yes, I hope, I hope so too. I know where you're coming from. I've been waiting for almost two weeks. I need to get four rides, and I'm just waiting and waiting and waiting two more days. Yeah, if, if you waited this long, uh, Cat and Assassin, you can wait two more days. You're gonna definitely, you're definitely gonna get some. Uh, but I mean, I ordered these rides like a, I don't know, it's like a week and a half ago. I knew the Catfish Commons was right around the corner too, but I was, I just gotta have them because I'm gonna be fishing in the boat a lot. Every weekend, I'm going to have that boat out, and I just need more rods for the boat. Because when fishing down in the um in the tidal waters in Maryland, you can have as many rods out as you want. That's many. And I only have two catfish rods. And then I have two other rods that I use for catfish rods, the Pen Fierce and the GX2. Um, they work. but And one of the catfish rods I have is the uh, 9'6". Too big, too big for the boat. You're going to be cat. I mean, it's going to get some great cast and distance, but when you're trying to land a fish with that nine foot six, it's going to be crazy. I was like, I ain't bringing this on the boat. 
And then I, but I have my brother's uh, blue cat rod out there today. <laughs> so you're, <laughs> I got the skunk off your rod, TJ. <laughs> I did catch a fish. I caught a 20 pounder on your rod. <laughs> The skunk is off of it. <sighs> My worry is they will direct orders to Facebook, and I don't do Facebook. Oh, I don't think so. Uh, well, so some companies are strictly just on Facebook. I do know that there are some companies, but majority of the companies, like Slime Cat, Whisker Seeker, Muddy River, all those companies like that, they all have their own website. So. They're not going to direct their their sales to to their. They're going to direct the sales to their website and then give you a code that's going to work on their website. The total fish today, Mister Gadget, was two. We caught two. Um, I didn't spend a lot of time fishing. So in my first live stream when I was up, I fished for about thirty minutes, and then my second live stream, I fished for about like 25, 30 minutes, and then I made a trip down to uh, DC, which took about. 35 40 minutes and then we side up we uh set up shop and we fished for like an hour um and i've had three hits and two uh hookups in in that hour that i was there so if i stopped if i got there earlier if i just shot straight up there earlier like um i would have caught more fish but i was just testing the boat out um didn't want to get too far from the boat ramp at first while i was figuring it out playing around with it playing around with electronics and all that stuff Ooh, a crappy rod. Slimecast is going to be releasing a crappy rod, but there wasn't any pictures of it online. Hopefully, they unveil Friday. Yeah, if I was Slimecat, I would definitely be unveiling something on Friday if if I were them and I was coming out with a new crappy rod. I know uh, Chris Flores, um, Muddy River Catfish, and he's going to be unveiling a um, a medium action rod. Um, so we're gonna we're gonna see how this goes. I was trying to get some more of his uh, blue cat rods, but they were look they weren't on his website, so I'm guessing that they're out of stock. Um, and he was probably just waiting until CatCon to put up his new inventory. These pay leggers here bought out everything in town because it's supposed to be warm this weekend. Guess I'll make. Oh man, the Pay Lakers. See, I'm glad we don't have Pay Lakers here, Jeff. In the DMV, I don't know of any Pay Lakes. I don't know of any. And I'm and I hope they don't start popping up like they are elsewhere cuz we don't have people really um you don't have I know the Pay Lakes, they take the big catfish out of the rivers and they put them in the lakes and then they just charge people to come in and fish their lakes and take the fish and then they do it all over again, man. It's a terrible thing. I want to buy. I know one time I've been looking, I've been waiting, I've been waiting, I've been waiting. I was like, man. So I have one, and I gave my brother one. Um, and I need more. I need more. <laughs> the, the, the problems every fisherman has is I need more. I need more rods. I need more reels. Catch more fish. <clears throat> Gather all my brother's fishing rods and leave him at home. And I'll go fishing, no doubt, with cat and assassin. <laughs> yeah, that's what, um my brother, he just leaves his rods in my truck. So his slime cat rods in my truck. He hasn't caught a fish on that yet. So maybe I'll catch a fish on that one for him too. Nah, I ain't gonna do that. <laughs> But uh, I'm going to leave a slime cat for him to catch a rod of uh, fish on. But that blue cat rod, he's going to – I don't – he'll be out with me on the boat next week too. I'm going to get him out there on the boat with me and get him to catch a fish. Unfortunately, here in Ohio, we're overrun with pay lakers. That's why fishing in the high river is difficult. Man, that's terrible, Mike. Terrible. Whoever dies with the most is wins. <laughs> Man, Mike, that's terrible, man. I hate that it's that way. They need to outlaw these pay lakes. I like DNR is so worried about um, you know, the population of fish and and setting regulations and limits on fish, but they don't do anything 
to stop these pay Lakers from taking all this, these channel catfish and one well, blue catfish out of the rivers. I know that um, up here, blue cats are invasive species and there is no limit. Um, you can kill and keep as many as you want, as many as you want, but that's just not my cup of tea. I was fishing. Uh, <laughs> was it TJ? Were you with me when I went fishing? There was a guy that came up and was like, uh, when I caught a blue catfish, he walked over. He's like, "Hey, what are you doing?" I'm, I'm, I'm fishing, catching blue cats. And he was like, "Oh, are you going to kill it? Cause we need to get rid of them." I was like, "No, sir. I'm releasing this guy. <laughs> I'm gonna let him get bigger. I'm gonna let him get bigger, buddy. I'm not releasing him." There's pay lakes literally right by the river. It's sickening. Yeah, that's sickening, Mike. That is sickening. We need to put a, a put a group together to petition to ban these pay lakes. One ton fishing club is going to be out fishing this weekend. Can't wait. Saturday, I will not be fishing because I'm fishing today, fishing tomorrow, fishing Friday. Saturday, I'm taking a break, and I'm just going to watch everybody fish on live stream. I'm going to just sit in the house, relax, um, sell some plates with Jasmine, and watch you guys go out fishing. Oh, man. So I got a message. Let me respond to this. Ooh, we make a video. We haven't dropped the video in a minute. Yeah, you gotta drop them videos too, one ton. I'll be dropping videos in with my uh live streams. It, that's where I started off doing. I was doing videos for a long time. I just started doing these live streams. But the one thing about live streams is you don't have to do no editing. <laughs> it just boom right up there. I didn't even record today on the boat. Um, so I'm going to do some recording tomorrow to get some B-roll footage and stuff. Saturday, you'll be out having a picnic with the wife and the kids on the boat. That'll be their day. All right, sat Saturday is where we, we're selling plates on Saturday, Kat, and so we won't be able to do that. But maybe Sunday. Sunday, we can get out, bring the kids out there because I won't be out there long. I'll just go out there, record. Uh, I won't go live or anything like that with them. I'll just bring the GoPro out and uh, get them out there, bring my son out too, and see how he handles the boat. Um, we're making uh, rasta pasta. Um, we have rasta pasta chicken dish and rasta pasta shrimp dish, or you can do the combo and uh, fried fish too as well. Rasta pasta is a uh, Caribbean um, jerk uh, flavored pasta. Um, it's delicious. It's delicious. Gypsy Habanero, follow that on Instagram and you'll be able to see all the delicious food that we put up me and the wife it's uh i help out it's her business she's the chef she runs the show let's see if we can't get this thing to pop up there we go all right there's the link I called in sick to work today, called a PB Creek Chub, so worth it. Love you, man. Man, no doubt some fish are sassy. Appreciate the donation. Boom, boom, boom. Oh, man. Hey, those days, I, I miss those days when I used to call in sick to work and just go out fishing. Called a PB Creek Chub, no doubt some fish, man. He'd be out there slaying them, slaying the, uh, the, the panfish, sunfish. I've never caught a creek chub. I haven't caught a creek chub yet. I don't fish the creeks much. I went fishing the creek. Uh, well, not really the creek. I was fishing the Potomac River way upstream, way, way, way upstream up into like Hagerstown area where the creek, where you can walk around in the Potomac River up there. And we were uh, we were catching smallmouth. 
You're a lucky man has to have a wife that cooks like that. Yes, I am. I'm super lucky and blessed. She makes some delicious food. She's always cooking. She's she slays it in the kitchen. Like, and her meals, they take uh, you know, like three hours to cook. And between prep and cooking and all that stuff, she's in there for like three, four hours. And that's why I've been putting on all this weight. Now I gotta go out there and jog and um get my summer body back for the beach and for the boat, you know. <laughs> Caught it in the river where I catch the gar. Well, I never caught a gar before. Those are dope. I would love to catch one of those. A gar. I wanted one of those alligator gar, like down in the south, like New Orleans. I wonder if Creoles ever uh, fish for alligator gar. I'm going to have to ask them. Because I know they have them down there. I believe I watch videos of them catching them down there. I would love to hook me into one of those 60, 70 pound. Avid, what's going on, brother? Appreciate you coming in. Oh, now that Avid's coming in, Long Nose Gar here. Yeah, there's Long Nose Gar here in D.C. too as well, Sunfish Assassin. There's Long Nose Gar. Uh, update, uh, package, it's been shipped out, right, Avid? So we have a package. Um, we raised uh, $70 on my last, on my live stream that I was with Mark. Um, it was like, you know, 100 and something, but or it was 100 and then the YouTube, they're, 30 to 30 percent um so we raised 70 dollars for a special person in the catfish community the package was sent out um avid me and avid collabed uh, uh he when i was on his uh his uh show from the bank with katie collins uh we were talking about it and i was like man i'm, I'm happy to pitch in any way that i can and shout out to everybody that donated um and helped him uh, put money to the cause um so that you know you got sent that money YouTube, I don't know when I get paid. It just sits into the account until it comes, but I ain't worried about that. I sent that money right over to Avid um, that night so he could start working on the package and getting that stuff together. Um, he got the package together and he got it shipped out. So be looking for an unboxing from a very special somebody in the catfish community. But they don't even know it's coming. It's a surprise. It's a surprise to them. It's a surprise to you guys. So I can't wait for the unboxing and you guys get to see and um, i'm just blessed to be a part of this catfish community and that we come together and can make stuff happen like this we'll be doing one uh again in march okay no doubt i have it so it seems like we're going to do this like once a month we're going to pick somebody in the catfish community and put some package together and uh get some stuff out to to them Catfish and crappie, what's going on, brother? Appreciate you coming in. Man, catfish, um, you left a comment on my video earlier that um <laughs> that um the, the gill nets they were foreign to you. And I was, yeah, they're super foreign to me. Um, I was out with Corey Flatty Daddies, and uh he was putting them out. He has two 100 yard gill nets and he put them out. And then um, we were catching fish in them. Man, it was a lot of work seeing him. I mean, it wasn't that much work, but it was definitely uh, exciting to uh, to watch and see and learn. I bought a cast net, and um, I haven't used it yet. I bought an eight foot cast net. Oh yeah, definitely get up with him, Brian, and uh, get that. He'll he'll connect with you on Facebook. I got an order. I put mine in. Mine's in my truck actually right now. I'm a beanie guy, so once I saw Avid had a beanie, I was like, oh, he makes beanies. Cause I'm not much of a trucker hat guy. I don't wear hats much, but I wear beanies all the time. You bought a net you're trying tomorrow? No doubt, Brian B. I had it out there with me, but I, I already had bait. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to figure it out, though. I know it's harder in the um in the wintertime. You got to go uh, try up by a uh, four-mile run at the mouth of four-mile run, Brian. Um, try up there. I know that the uh, shad hang out up there a lot, so. Go check out the mouth of four mile run. You'll probably be able to catch a, a by the boatload. By the boatload. Where did you fish? You were using gill nets. Uh Virginia. So we were in the Potomac River, but on the Virginia side. In the um in Virginia, you can use gill nets. Um that was when I was out with Jimbo and um and uh Flatty Daddies. He has a gill net, so he brought it out. Um 
you're allowed to you're you're allowed to um yeah i catfish and crappie i appreciate that um i have no problem with you if you wanted to to um you know put your link in there for your facebook let me give me one second let's help you out because you know we like to share the wealth he wants a hat hook get him get him hooked up his trucker yeah they are near they are nice quality they are nice quality so you you feel free to drop your uh you know your facebook page or your facebook link in there or your your facebook uh catfish and crappie page in there that's all right so that he can get the uh he can get his hat love mine just scared to get it dirty yeah yeah <laughs> I asked my wife, so I was allowed to donate. <laughs> no doubt. I appreciate uh, Sunfish Assassin's wife. Uh, thank you for allowing Sunfish to donate. I appreciate that. It means a lot. It means a lot to the channel. As you know, this channel just uh, bought a boat. So uh, all my donations are just going to go right to the boat and fixing that thing up and putting money into it and getting it outfitted to, uh, to, make, more, to make better live stream content for you guys. Black beanies are sold out, folks. I'm so glad I was able to get one before they sold out. Uh, those were must have been a hot commodity. Uh, but we're getting near the end of winter, so you can just restock up for next winter. I have two beanies and one baseball cap of catfish and crappies. No doubt. Yeah, Avid, you're the one who I saw that had it. In your live stream, I was watching your live stream. You had it on, and catfish and crappie, he was in there. And I was like, oh, I need this hat. And then I bought it like during the live stream, right then and there. I bought that hat, and he had it shipped out the next day. Quick, thanks, man. Appreciate it. Yeah, it is. It's a beast, man. Twenty-two feet. Um, it can handle the the uh, Potomac River and the Chesapeake Bay and offshore. That's the reason why I was looking at that. I didn't want to go with your traditional um, aluminum boats with the low uh, rails because I have uh, I have a 14 month well 15 month old son. I have older kids that, um, you know, but they'll be fine on it. But I want a space for my family to enjoy it. I wanted them to be able to come. I just want to get something for myself. I wanted everybody. I have, uh, you know, my, my mom to come out, my stepdad, my brother, sisters. Obviously, not everybody come out all at once, but I can handle 10 people in that boat comfortably, no problem. No doubt, man. Appreciate it. Walk the dog. I'm assuming Coco is the dog. Got to take the dog out for a walk. Getting too warm down here for beanies. Yeah, fishing with Big Mike. I still, it was 60 degrees today, and I still had my beanie on. Yes, I support Catfish and Crappie too, 100%. He's a great guy, man. Great dude and makes great content. He makes great content. Cook out on the boat. Yes, definitely will do. And I have to get a grill for the boat. That's next. Um, I was just trying to get all the main stuff for the boat and make sure that stuff was taken care of for the boat, make sure that had everything to get out on the water. And um, then next is to add some amenities. Going to put two cooler two long coolers back there. Um, the coolers are going to be like coolers slash benches um, and have the throwaway, uh, you know, the, the throw over life vests or whatever, you know, those are going to be the cushions basically on, on the cooler. What are you taking us all fishing? I'll, I'll take anybody. If you come up here and make the trip, you can get on the boat. We're not going to catch many sunfish in that boat. We'll catch the sunfish before, and then we'll bring them on the boat and use them for bait. How does that sound, sunfish assassin? I know you like to eat them, but we're going to have to use some for bait, okay? We're going to have to use some of those for some bait. Because I'm going to turn one one cooler is going to be um, for the fish. It's going to be my live well, too, as well. Um, So for dead fish, live fish, whatever fish. Well, actually, I have a, a cooler locker under. I mean, I have a fish locker underneath of where the cooler is going to sit, where I'll be able to put the dead, you know, the fish I want to keep to eat at. Ah, okay. 
Okay, Avid. Okay, okay. I like that. I like that. I like that. I like that, Avid. That's dope. I'm making my cutting board Friday. Did the cuts, but need the counter sinkers. Oh, oh, no doubt, Brian. I got cutting boards on. I just ordered some these like uh, I don't even know. They're flat, flimsy material. Comes in three because I have a flat space on the back of my boat, and I just put those on the back of uh, on the back of my boat, and so I just cut my fish on that. But then even I was trying to just be cheap and not have to make a cutting board until I figure out what I'm doing with the back. Once I figure out my ultimate. You know, lay out how I'm going to do my rod rack and rod holders. I'm going to definitely put a, you know, cutting board in there, put that in the mix. But for now, we're just going to go with that. Um, I should be able to use my rod holder tomorrow, too, as well, the rod holder that I made. Um, I'm going to use that tomorrow. The glue should be pretty dry. I know it's 24 hours of the drying time. I was going to give it 48 hours just to make sure. Oh, and we'll test the uh, rod racks that I made out of, well, I made one of them so far because I want to test it out first. But it's made out of PVC pipe, and I used um, Gorilla Glue, the extreme. Like, they have, like, three levels of Gorilla Glue, and I got the, the you know, the toughest, strongest one, and I just glued them suckers together. So I hope it works. It, they slide right into my flush mount, so it turns one flush mount into three Three rod holders, one rod holder and three. And then I'm going to do that for both sides. So then I'll have six rod holders and then two uh, two rod holders. And then I'm going to put uh, up on the front of the boat, we're going to put the um, the rods, uh, monster rod holders around the railing. I just got to get up with my boy Jimbo. He, got, um, he switched out his rod holders on all his boat. He has like, I think he had like 18 monster rod holders. So he's hooking me up with a super sweet deal. He's holding them for me. I just got to meet up with him. He's in North Carolina. So we'll just, um, you know, but in the next month or so, I'll meet up with him and get those rod holders and we'll start um, working on something to install those on the boat. I would love to see a meet and greet at Kerr Lake and a campground there for the weekend. I would love to see that too, Mr. Gadget. I would love to see that too. Perfect. I used it for bait too. All right, no doubt, sunfish. <laughs> that works. It will work. If it works, I will get you one done. It was easy. Okay, no doubt, Brian B. Man, appreciate that, man. Appreciate that. Um, Kerr Lake. I definitely want to fish Kerr Lake. Uh, monsters, Mondo monster catfish come out of Kerr Lake. I would, and it's probably about a three-hour drive, maybe three and a half-hour drive for me. I know it's on the border of North Carolina and Virginia. Um, so it's not that far of a drive for me. I would take the boat, shoot it down 95, do a meet and greet. Where does Jimmo fish most mostly? Um, North Carolina is where he fishes, yeah. Um, that's where he lives. He lives in North Carolina, so he fishes a lot of that North Carolina lakes, regions, uh, Santee, Cooper, Kerr Lake, all that stuff. But he travel fishes a lot too as well. So, he, you know, he got a boat, he got a truck, he does tournament catfishing. So I can't, uh, we're going to, that's going to be something new that I'm getting into this year too, as well. Going to get into some tournament catfishing. Um, so we're going to see how that goes. That'll be exciting too, to get out there and, and do some, I'm not, you know, I'm not like, you know, taking it serious. It's like, oh yeah, I'm trying to go out and win all these tournaments and make all this money and all stuff. No, I'm just having, I just want to have fun. Like, you know, put in you know, buy in, have some fun, you know, go out there with, a, you know, with a good buddy, catch some fish. All right. Oh, so catfish and crappie, my battery died when I got back to the boat ramp. When I got back to the boat ramp, um, I have two batteries that power the boat, um, start the boat. And when I got back to the boat ramp, um, I got it all tied up and then I loaded back the trailer up in and then I untied the bow, um, untied the stern rope and I left the bow uh, rope tied up because I was just like, I don't need to untie this because I can, I have plenty of room to pull the boat into the trailer um, and the line is long enough. So I don't, I'm not going to have to untie it. So I didn't untie it. And 
I push away so so that I can get it the boat right in front of the trailer and then go to start it up. And it's just like it's just going normally the, the noise that it makes it goes and then it'll start up and that's like this buzzing noise first before it does the engine that's not the, the sound of the engine but um it was just going like like it was just like dying out it was dying out at the end of it. i was like man do i not have enough power in the battery to crank the you know to start the the boat uh man it was a mess so i had to the boat at this time now it was in position now it floated to the other side of the trailer and it's facing this way. I was like, oh crap. So I had to jump out onto the trailer, get into the water. I'm like knee deep into the Potomac River, pull the boat around <laughs> and then pull the boat onto the trailer using the rope. I backed the trailer in far enough and I pulled the boat in um, and, and I got it uh, you know, up onto the trailer and then got it hooked up and then just cranked it up into a spot. So it was fine. It was just a hassle. And that was my first time loading the boat up ever for it to go like that. I was like, man, this would be how my day ends. Everything went perfect. Everything was fine. Everything was great. But then at the end of it, my battery died. Luckily, it died there and not when I was out in the water. And I do have a third battery. And this battery is uh, like 1,000 cranking amps. Um, and it's the biggest battery that I have. And that battery is just powering my um fish finder that's the only thing it's powering right now it will be powering more stuff later down the line but i would have just took that battery off and uh hooked it up to the boat and then got it started that's why i bought that battery too just to have a just in case the other batteries you know die on me those batteries are brand new too the guy put uh put um two brand new batteries in there in november um you can see the the, the stamp is right there on the batteries too they're brand new um, he's a great guy too. I talked to him today when I got out there to put the butt, put it in the um, water. He walked me through how to get it started up and everything. Cause you know, it's an old two stroke. Sometimes you got to play around with it to get it to, uh, to get it to start up and rev the engine up, pull it into the neutral and uh, get it to go. Um, you know, and it'll sit in for a while. I don't think there is a charger from the motor, but I'm going to have to check. Um, now, when I was looking just now, I was doing my research to find out um, if there is a charger. Uh, it was saying like motors that are built within the last 20 years have chargers, majority of them. My motor is 32 years old, so I don't know if it has a charger. It may not have a charger. It may not have a charger. So I'm, I'm just going to have to, you know, take the batteries out and charge them up every time just to make sure that I have enough juice. Cause I don't want to have that problem again, even though I do have a third battery on the boat, which I know, you know, that will, that will, oh man, that's rough with a boat that size even harder. Yeah, it was rough. 22 foot boat and it's a heavy boat too. 4,500 pounds is the weight of it. So, um, but man, we got it done. I got it done. I got it. I was like, I'm not going to have this boat, uh, you know, all this money go down the drain and this boat just failed me now. Huh. <sighs> It should charge. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. I thought I thought they would charge up. And I started it up in D.C. and I took a run like 45 minutes. And it was running for 45 minutes, like, you know, 45, 50 minutes running straight in the water to, to the boat ramp. That was about, yeah, might have even been an hour. And you would think an hour of running, even if the battery was a little low, it would have definitely charged up in that hour stretch of me running the road motor for an hour straight. So I don't know. He also said to check uh, the terminals in the back of the boat, which I didn't look at. Um, so I checked the terminals because I talked to him when I got off the water. He uh, he hit me up and asked me how everything went um, with the boat because I hit him up, was trying to get the boat started. I was having a little problem earlier, but once I got it started, it was fine. Um, once I figured out the trick, you know, how to get it, how to get it going. Um, it ran good, ran like a dream. So, yeah, um, got the batteries charging up um, right now. They're on the charger and then we're going to take them out to the um, boat, put the boat back in the water tomorrow and test it out. Um, before I do that, though, I'm going to check all the connectors and make sure I know all the connectors on the battery were tight, but I didn't check the um the ones on the back of the boat behind the um undressing that i guess uh have more connectors that go to the motor so i'm gonna check those connectors and make sure those are all good and clean and everything and make sure those are all 
good to go. You can't help with a motor that age. Yeah, I know. It's an old mode. It's older than me. It's older than me. Yeah, so I was at I was at 12.7 volts when I got to the house. I, I um, My multimeter was sitting in the truck. Um, so I had it on, but I didn't have it in the boat. But um, once I got to the house and before I put the batteries on the on the charger, it was reading 12.7 volts, which is, that's good. Like, I mean, that's not, I mean, obviously that's not fully charged battery, but 12.7 volts, so I don't know. I know the batteries weren't completely dead because it was still turning on the lights and the bilge pump and all that stuff. But we're going to figure it out tomorrow, and we're going to get it back out there. Boats are bad for having a sieve to blow when you connect the batteries. Make sure you connect the positive first and last when you remove it. It will pop a fuse with any spark. Okay, no doubt. And I'll definitely take that in note, Mr. Gadget. <sighs> Definitely take that and no, and then the the batteries they're running uh succession like they're run together they're wired together, so it basically turns twelve volts into twenty four volts. I'm pretty sure that's what happens. So I took you know I definitely took pictures of everything before I disconnected everything. I already saw how everything goes back in, and um, it's pretty easy setup, very easy. You got the negative going to the negative and the positive going into the positive, so it was, it was easy. But yeah, let's see. These are the batteries that were. And that's it right there. I think you guys can see that. Uh... So there are two Everstart 675 uh, CCA cold crank amps, two of them. And then I have one over there that's a thousand. Well, not over there. That's in my boat still. But that's good to know. And I have the uh I have the um the switch so I can uh go from one battery or two batteries or all batteries. Now when I I think what I'm gonna do from now on is once I get to my spot, I'm just gonna turn the batteries off because um my my fish finder is on a whole nother battery. So I don't even have to worry about anything draining because obviously, you know, if it's not off, the batteries are still going to be pulling power. So I'm just going to turn those off for now or just only use one battery. Just put it on one battery for now. Are they deep cycle? Yes, they're deep cycle marine batteries. All of them, they're deep cycle marine Everstar batteries from uh, Malwart. Wal <laughs> Sorry, Walmart. Um, marine starting power, Everstar, brand new. Um, 675 cold cranking amps, um, two of them. They're both brand new. In November, they were put in the boat. Okay, that series stays 12 volts. Okay, okay. Uh, yeah, I wasn't sure. I know there's one series where you can make turn it into 24 volts. I don't need 24 volts. I was just, you know, I was just saying. Sound like me, some bad wire for my stern light. I know you know what the stern is, and you've got to, <laughs> yes, yes, stern, yes. I know I got some. I have uh, my lights work on the boat, but not the not my night lights. Um, the pole doesn't work. Um, I bought a new pole, but it doesn't fit into the old connector. I guess the connector's changed or something. It doesn't slide in there. So I have to order me a new connector, and I'm going to wire that up myself. I'm going to wire that up to the new battery. If um, Well, first I'm going to use the wire that's there, and if it doesn't work, then I'm going to just run a whole new wire to the new battery and to the new bus bar that I put in there. Enjoyed the show, but got to go until next time. No doubt, Roger. Yeah, I need to go, too. <laughs> I need to go too because I gotta get some rest. I need to get some sleep so I can get out there on the boat tomorrow. Yes, oh yeah, I think I already answered that. Rigged that they are a deep cycle. But yeah, I appreciate you guys coming in. Um, we're gonna go ahead and wrap up this live stream. 
All right, Roger, Ricky, Tiger, G Style, appreciate you coming in. Brian B, Mark, Catfishing, Chris, what's going on, brother? Oh man, there goes my man right there, Chris Caron. That's my boy. Oh, the first run was great. The first run was great, other than the ending, um, other than um the ending and the batteries uh dying and not starting up. Other than that, man, she ran like a champ. So I took the batteries off, got them fully charged up. I'm gonna check the uh, multimeter voltage and make sure they are fully charged up 14 volts. Could be the backlight sockets. Socket does it look rusted in the inside of the it doesn't look rusted, but I'm gonna order a new one. It just wasn't fitting. I'm like, I'm thinking like, okay, the prongs, this is right. It's a, I thought they all are the same, you know. I didn't know there was there was different ones, but yeah. Well, I'm gonna play around and we're gonna get it right. Appreciate you guys tuning in. Has life. I'm out. Peace. I'll see you guys tomorrow live out there on the water. As long as everything goes work, working with the boat. If not, I'll be live from the bank, you know. <laughs> All right.